Hello again, I am Blunty, and I am very excited about a couple of things that just happened in VR. You're watching me play some Audica, a new VR rhythm game from Harmonix, the people who once helped milk instrument rhythm games dry until they basically killed off the whole genre for everybody. I did record a whole video, a first impressions review thing about this game, but the instant I uploaded it, I got a copyright ping, because Harmonix are so stupid and clearly don't want creators to share the gameplay of this early access game, they included tracks in here which trigger YouTube's copyright things. Unlike Beat Saber, which by the way is a superior game, to this and it's just had a bunch of new content added you should be playing that first i'm not saying audica is bad it's actually quite fun but beat saber is still better anyway that's why i'm using the footage as background here at least i have to use it for something i recorded the damn stuff if i can't use it for a review i might as well use it here and i have had to mute the actual music for obvious reasons and that probably makes all this look pretty dumb but my mini rant annoyance with the harmonix's short-sightedness aside what i actually wanted to pop off about today it Pop, pop off about? Why did I say it like that? What I actually wanted to pop off about today is some new VR headsets that further evolve the market and both for the better in some fairly significant and fun ways. One is from Oculus, which could be a serious game changer, and the other is from HP. Now, regulars around here will know I'm a big fan of the so-called Windows Mixed Reality headsets. They're not actually mixed reality at all, but Microsoft are very bad at names. They are, in fact, normal VR headsets without any ability for actual mixed reality or augmented reality at all. But bad branding aside, they do represent tremendously good value. They use inside-out tracking, cameras on the headset itself to track the controllers, so there's no external tracking devices or satellite projectors to mount around your play space, no extra cables to run around your room, no fuss, no muss. You just plug in the headset to your PC and HDMI, USB, and off you go. They're super affordable, they can do room scale VR, and they only have one real drawback, which is because of the way the controller tracking works, you can occasionally have momentary issues. Especially with your hands directly at sides where the tracking cameras can't see them. Now, this hasn't been a deal breaker for me. It works perfectly well on basically every game I've ever played. I very occasionally have issues with it, but when you do have issues with it, it's pretty annoying. But if you'd like to know more about this particular issue, I have a very in-depth video on it linked in the down below area. Anyway, HP have a new version of this system. They're calling it the HP Reverb. It is very similar to the previous range of these poorly branded mixed reality headsets, except that they've bumped up the screen resolution from the standard for the system, 1440 by 1440 per eye, although Samsung have a model with slightly higher than that. But the Reverb goes up to 2160 by 2160 per eye while maintaining that ever important 90 hertz refresh rate, which helps keep people from getting motion sick. They're also using screens with full RGB stripe subpixels, which will lead to even less of a screen door effect. Not an issue I've had with these headsets much at all, even on the standard 1440 versions. But all improvements in that area are welcome. And they've also switched out for new Fresnel lenses. They say offer a larger sweet spot. It has integrated headphones, which is nice. And it seems like the standard WinMR controllers are the same as before. All in all, I'm pretty damn excited about this. That resolution bump is very inviting. And as I said, I very much enjoy my Dell MR headset you can see me using here. And but with the exception of losing the Halo style headband, the PlayStation VR style headband, and the easy flip up visor that comes with it, everything about HP's new hardware seems like a very nice step up indeed. Except here comes Oculus, whose standalone Oculus Go headset, which I've previously reviewed and done a few videos about, and which despite my distaste for their Facebook overlords, I in fact enjoy and recommend very much for fast and easy standalone cable-free VR uh, that offers a great passive VR content consumption experience. Although be warned, it does suck for games, don't buy it for games, buy proper VR for games. And again, if you are interested in learning more about this, there will be links in the down below area. Man, there's going to be a lot of links down there on this one, isn't there? <laughs> well, anyway, Oculus just took the wraps off the new version of the Oculus Rift, and they're calling it the Oculus Rift S. Now, I never recommended the original Oculus Rift. Its web camera-based tracking was inferior to the Vive's tracking system. It was more limited, it was messy at a setup, and it swallowed way too many extra USB ports for my taste. Although I did like the Oculus controllers better. The new S model, though, changes things up in a big way. They've moved the tracking to the Windows MR style inside out tracking, but Oculus are using five cameras instead of two. 
two of which are mounted in side and downward facing positions, which should, of course, very effectively eliminate the occasional arms down tracking issues I mentioned before that you see with the Windows MR headsets. And based on some of the earliest hands-on impression stuff I've seen about this headset, the tracking works brilliantly well. The screen is basically the same resolution as the Oculus Go, 2180 by 1440 per eye, which of course is less than the standard 1440 by 1440 of the existing Windows MR headsets, but not significantly so. I had no real complaints about the resolution of the Oculus Go. And of course it is a big jump up over the paltry 1080p resolution of the original Rift. They too have also improved the screen tech with a better subpixel system to even further reduce the screen door effect. Also along for the ride are redesigned versions of what I already considered the best balanced and most comfortable VR handsets. Hopefully they haven't fixed what isn't broke on that. In short, I think the Oculus Rift S is going to be the most user friendly and well balanced in terms of tech versus performance versus price in the enthusiast consumer VR space. Along with the brand recognition Oculus has and the marketing money you know will be behind it, it stands a chance of becoming the de facto choice for PC VR. Already, thanks to price drops and aggressive marketing and HDC's own bumbling and seemingly disinterest in the consumer space, in the last year or so, the original Oculus Rift has by most measures caught up and effectively passed the market penetration of HTC Vive. Probably safe to say the Oculus is the most popular premium VR headset out there right now for PC. And while I'm a fan of the value and ease of use of Windows MR headsets and would recommend over the existing Oculus, Bad branding and worse marketing meant they never really got much momentum in the market so far. Which I feel is a shame. Hopefully HP's version is the vanguard of a second generation of these which will be better marketed and better branded. But at the end of the day, I think I'll start stashing aside some cash for an Oculus Rift S. They'll be priced at 399 of the Orange Overlord's currency units, and seeing as I have frequently and aggressively stomped on Facebook rather publicly, there's probably not much chance I can wrangle a review sample, so I'm going to have to buy my own. <laughs> that said, the inferior controller tracking and all aside, that new HP unit with the huge advantage in resolution is very tempting too. I wonder if I could justify owning both. Maybe I'll get the Rift S for my room scale stuff, and then get the reverb for a sort of sitting at desk type stuff, because that super duper resolution is going to be real nice for content consumption. Yeah, I can probably justify both. <laughs> I'm such a tech whore. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Remember to do the thing where you hit the subscribe, hit the bell, do the follow things. And if you do do that thing, thank you, because apparently it helps the channel. Although you never know with YouTube's algorithms these days, you never know. Worth a try though, right?